So hadrianus aperitiva is one of those conditions that when you hear it, you kind of get a chill down, down your spine. This is a horrific condition that is life altering that has really been put in the corner for many years, you know, kind of treated like the ugly stepchild of dermatology, which is so unfortunate because we have so many great tools to help these patients who, many of whom can't even lift their arms, let alone sit down because of the painful pain associated with uh, the active lesions. We've seen a lot of growth and a lot of interest in this area in the last several years. Um, we had adalimumab and still have adalimumab, uh, and as well as biosimilars that we can utilize for hydranitis. More recently, secukinumab just got approved, which is very exciting. Uh, I think many of us in this space have been using biologics off-label, which is not the easiest things, and that's where samples can be very helpful. So being able to actually get insurance to cover a medication that's needed lifelong, or for at least for a very long time, I think is, is very helpful. And I would even argue showing patients that, hey, there's another FDA-approved drug, it validates their experience. It gives them confidence in the medical system and is a, is a sign of hope. We actually did a study at GW in partnership with HS Connects, asking that question is knowing that there's another FDA approved drug, what does that mean to you? And of course, HS patients were really excited, not to mention that having more options increases uptake in terms of dermatologists taking care of these patients, which has really been a problem because we know these patients can bounce around to primary care, ER, ID, rheumatology, you name it, and the average time from onset to diagnosis is still seven to 10 years. That is absolutely unacceptable. We have to do better by these patients because often by that point, they already have extensive scarring, sinus tracts, tombstone comedones, things that medical therapy will not get rid of. They will need surgical intervention. In an ideal Disney film type world, we would get to these patients before they have significant permanent damage. And that's really what we're trying to do. And I'm hopeful now with a very rich pipeline of both biologics, small molecule inhibitors coming down the road that are gonna be FDA approved, not the litany of off-label options, everything from antibiotics, uh, including Dapsone, to antihormonal therapies like spironolactone, uh, to even small molecule inhibitors like reflumolast. Wouldn't it be lovely if we have things that are supported by sizable studies and really give us insight in terms of how will a drug behave in all HS patients, that is sorely missing. So I am really excited about both the systemic and even topical pipelines coming up, and I can tell you HS patients are as well.